This podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can now get two free audiobook downloads and a 30-day free trial at audible.bogosity.tv. Your choice from the world's largest selection of over 180,000 digital audiobooks and spoken word content for your iOS or Android device, Kindle, or MP3 player. Go to audible.bogosity.tv now. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of April 2nd, 2017, the podcast that walks down Park Drive. This is your host, Shane Killian, and joining us this week is Charles Thomas. Charlie, welcome back to the podcast. Hello, everyone. Let's re-incriminate the news of the bogus. So, as I mentioned last week, the latest WikiLeaks dump focuses on how the CIA has been targeting Apple devices like Macintosh computers, iPhones, and iPads. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, they were doing this earlier than they were a lot of other devices, and indeed, even before the wave of hackers targeting Apple devices as well. So they were really ahead of the time on this one. Oh, yeah. I mean, hey, if if CIA doesn't do the hacking, I mean, that means the terrorists win. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and as quickly as they got popular, it kind of stands to reason. Mm -hmm. So this part of the dump is called Dark Matter, named after one of the exploits covered in the leak. And we mentioned last week how WikiLeaks is offering to give the data to technology companies before publishing details of the exploits. Apple was apparently less than thrilled. Here's what they said, quote, The alleged iPhone vulnerability affected iPhone 3G only and was fixed in 2009 when iPhone 3GS was released. Additionally, our preliminary assessment shows the alleged Mac vulnerabilities were previously fixed and all Macs launched after 2013. We have not negotiated with WikiLeaks for any information. We have given them instructions to submit any information they wish through our normal process under our standard terms. Thus far, we have not received any information from them that isn't in the public domain. We are tireless defenders of our user security and privacy, but we do not condone theft or coordinate with those that threaten to harm our users. Wow, that really turned there at the end. What brought that on? Hmm, I wonder why. What's that big old turn right there? What is What is that? That's going deeper. <laughs> yeah, that escalated quickly. Yeah. So there are three exploits that are covered. Sonic Screwdriver, which is a USB device in the form of a Thunderbolt to Ethernet adapter you plug into a Mac laptop while it's booting, and you can bypass all the firmware protections, even when a firmware password is enabled. And yes, security researchers love their Doctor Who references. The exploit to turn a Samsung TV into a listening device was called Weeping Angel. Hmm. So much references for a show that I have never watched. This show either must be really good, or it's just people are just really, really into, like, the memes or something like that. I don't know. I've been watching it since I was a kid, and I've been hooked, so... Mm. Tom Baker was my doctor. Oh, well. There's another one that was, like, uh, Dark Sea Skies. Yep. That's actually three different ones. It's Dark Matter, which is a kernel space implant that can give the hacker root privileges... CP, which is a rootkit dating back to 2005, and Night Skies, which gives the hacker complete control over an iPhone 3G, and I'm sure that's the one they were talking about in their response. And these exploits go back a decade, if not more, back to a time when Apple advocates were saying that Apple devices were secure and unhackable, you know, famous last words. Oh, yeah. I I heard heard that so many times about Max. I'm like... You do realize, like, this is around the same time because, oh, Macs can never have viruses. Or I'm like, you know, the reason why that is because most most people in the country basically have PCs. Yeah, but once iPhones started becoming popular, all that changed. Yeah. But, I mean, you generally are better protected under Mac and Linux than you will be under Windows because it's a lot harder to get that privilege escalation into uh, root access, but... What we're talking about here with these vulnerabilities, with these exploits, you're talking about root kits and you're talking about kernel space implants and other things that will give you full administrative privileges over it. So So we hope that despite Apple's attitude, they have taken steps to ensure that these vulnerabilities have been fixed, although it would be a lot better to have a more open and friendly response from them. I mean, just look at how LastPass has responded to a couple of recent vulnerabilities in their software. That's an example of how to do it right. Well, that's the thing. You know, you have to, you know, say, yeah, there were some issues, but we have fixed it. And you made sure that this stuff never happens again. You know, good PR, which some people seem to don't have. Yeah. 
<laughs> and of course, we'll keep covering the WikiLeaks revelations as they happen, so stay tuned. Say, if you're tired of the promos in this podcast, well, the patrons got it early and with no ads or promos. Just go to patreon.bogosity.tv and donate at any level. Do you have children or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain or regulations passed in the name of safety and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. One reason why you've been hearing so few cops behaving badly stories on the podcast is our policy in recent years of only covering the more extreme examples, since with the others there's generally nothing new and we just end up repeating ourselves. Nothing's really changed in that regard. Except the extremes still happen. Case in point, the Fresno County Sheriff's Department destroyed the house of an innocent man to capture a homeless man who was armed with an ice cream bar. It seems like it's something out of a comedy show or something, <laughs> or some type of like sketch comedy. I, I was thinking of Ren and Stimpy, you know, you covered my ice cream bar! Yeah, or like maybe <laughs> some Mad TV, or something like uh, Saturday Night Live when it was good, <laughs> other than just boring Trump memes and such. Why is that show still on when it's not really funny anymore? The first Trump sketch they did was funny. The others were funny only because they were basically using the same script of the first one. And it's yeah, like, well, really? It's... You can't come up with anything new? No. Nope. You get material like that? Like Donald friggin' Trump? And that's the best you can do? Well, hey, that's what it is. It's copy-paste. It's, um, damn, boom, done. No real effort there. But yeah, this, I just, this is amazing. They will destroy everything just to get a person with an ice cream bar. And the best part is, I guarantee you, the person who gets the house was destroyed, they get the police are like saying, well, we're not going to really do anything. It's all in pursuit of justice. Well, what they said was they had insurance that'll cover it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really help much. I was recently rear-ended, and although her insurance is covering it, I'd still much rather that not happen because it's taking, you know, so much time out of my life to deal with this and find a repair shop and all that. So what happened was, a homeless man was spotted by a construction crew breaking into the home of David Jessen. This same homeless man was caught sleeping in the closet of another house he'd broken into. In that case, he had left peacefully and without incident. Apparently, it's not someone looking to cause trouble. He just wants, like, a warm place to sleep or something, so... The construction workers called the police. Jessen was notified. When he got home, he found four sheriff's cars outside, one of them on the lawn and a deputy yelling through a bullhorn, and now it's starting to sound like Alice's Restaurant. Oh, yeah. You know, they had nine police officers and five police cars and all this cop equipment they had laying around they was waiting to use, which really sounds like, and well, when we get into this, what was going on, they asked Jessen if he had any guns in the house. He said there were three. Two of them had no ammo. One was hidden only where he could find it. The deputies asked for a house key. He gave it to them, and he and his family went to a friend's house to await the all-clear. Well, the homeless man surrendered peacefully as he had done before, and the cops, ever respectful of Jessen's property, escorted him away without incident. Oh, wait, sorry. That's the opposite of what happened. That's what should have happened, but what did happen was something very different. According to Jessen's lawsuit with the police department, quote, As David was driving toward the home from Jensen, David counted approximately 55 or more law enforcement vehicles. David was then ordered to park along Relinda Avenue north of his home and instructed to walk to his home. On his way to his home, David was stopped by a SWAT person who told him the operation was concluded. A second Fresno County Deputy Sheriff, the Jessens are informed and believe, and upon information and belief allege, was a lieutenant. 
handed David a card, and said, We have insurance for this. A third Fresno County deputy sheriff showed David the damage, and David was overwhelmed by the severity and extent of the damage to the residents. The damage to the Jessens' residence was massive and extensive. The magnitude of the damage to the Jessens' home was unreasonable and unjustified, needlessly implemented to capture a singular, surrounded, unarmed, hungry, homeless person who posed no danger to anyone and cooperated in leaving the neighbor's residence earlier. Yeah, and don't you just love all the stuff they had to do? This The police department had to have used over 50 vehicles, a canine unit, two helicopters, two ambulances, one fire truck, a crisis negotiation team, a robot, a SWAT team, and another SWAT team from another police department. For one homeless person. And 27, 8 by 10 color glossy pictures of the quote scene of the crime, unquote, with the circles and the arrows and the paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was. Yeah. yeah. Alice's restaurant again. You know, it just shows right there the um huge big budgets of these police departments. Yeah. Fighting off these ghosts making mountains out of molehills. Yeah. So here's all the things they did. They ripped out the wrought iron door and interior door to the Jensen's home office pulled the wall of the office off the foundation, remember, one homeless guy, broke the window to the office, tear-gassed the bathroom near the office, shattered the glass sliding door to the home so the robot could get in, ripped the wrought iron door off the laundry room, tear-gassed the laundry room, flash-bombed the laundry room and the business office that resulted in breaking six windows, tear-gassed the kitchen, the master bathroom, the sewing room, and the bedroom in the northeast corner of the home, and destroyed over 90 feet of exterior fencing with a SWAT vehicle. For one homeless guy. Well, listen, that could have escalated. That homeless homeless man could have, you know, messed up the sheets or something when he was sleeping in the bed. I mean, that could have been really disturbing and destructing of property. So they had, the police had to go in there and basically destroy more property to save the (laughs) place. You know, it's just... Yeah, they destroyed, according to the lawsuit, over $150,000 worth of property the damage caused to jessen by the homeless man was one window some milk half a tomato and an ice cream bar gee and for some bizarre reason even after the homeless man was apprehended they were still looking for that hidden handgun they ended up finding it because jessen told him over the phone where to look for it he was cooperating a hundred percent and had no expectation at all that anything like that amount of untold destruction would occur yeah, when you have a uh, system of police who have, they have unlimited power for the most part. They don't have any type of uh, repercussions, no no competition, no consequences for their actions. You know, and people are going to say, well, just give them more money. They, they'll fix everything, which is not how you solve these issues. The lawsuit also alleges, quote, All of this military-like activity was implemented and completed without Jessen's request, approval, or consent. Jessens are informed and believe the training operation was undertaken because the Fresno County Sheriff's Department and or Clovis Police Department had found, by accident, the perfect location to conduct a training exercise on a rural home on a dead-end street in rural Fresno County where civilians were not present, civilians were not going to congregate, civilians were not going to observe or interfere with a military training assault on the jessens home and the situation posed no risk of injury to the officers the fresno county sheriff's department and clovis police department seized upon this fortuitous opportunity to engage in a real life training exercise <laughs> yeah you know I'm, i i know i know i'm doing something really crazy here is um you know looking at some of the comments and such i know don't read the comments but it's interesting that they said um Tear gas, that would be a war crime. Tear gas affects breathing, and under the late 19th and early 20th century treaties, this means stuff like this is a war crime. But yet, it's okay to use in civilians. Yeah, the CS gas they used against the Branch Davidian compound, if someone had used that in war, it would have been considered this horrible war crime and a breach of the Geneva Convention, and in fact, that very same gas was used uh, in an operation in Syria that they were blaming Assad for and said that that proved that Assad was this horrible person. Yeah, and it's okay for use in United States citizens. Yeah. 
And if nothing else, I'm sure that given the alternative, Jessen probably would have been happier with them just leaving the homeless guy alone. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe who knows? You might find someone to um, talk to or maybe, heck, maybe made a podcast with or something. <laughs> or at least said, you know, hey, you know, I go to this church. Maybe they've got a place they can put you in or something. Who knows? Yeah, you know, help them out. You know, help the homeless instead of just shutting them away or just using them or locking them up. Yeah. Yeah, they tell them to go hide in the court. We don't want to see you. If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government censors. It's essential in this day and age. So go to vpn.bogosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world. And they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. So we've been covering the situation in Venezuela and the horrible conditions their socialist government has relegated the people to. One question is, why did it appear that everything was fine for so long? Well, as the saying goes, they ran out of other people's money. And in this case, other people's money was, apparently, China's. Oh, joy. Yes, at a point where China has been opening up its market and through its autonomous territory, Hong Kong, proving how free economies help all the people, they've been propping up one of the biggest failures of socialism in recent history and the biggest and best experiment into modern 21st century democratic socialism. Oh, but if you talk to Bernie Sanders, he'll keep saying socialism works. Yeah. Well, in 2013, he was saying, look at Venezuela. That's proof that it works. Yeah, just ignore all the people propping it up, not just from its citizens, but also other nations. They never survive on their own. Now, in all honesty, it probably has more to do with Venezuela's oil than some kind of camaraderie among socialists. Although it's been such a failure that the Venezuelan government can't even afford to sell the oil. Jeez. But China's policy here isn't that different than it is in other countries in Africa and Asia that have good oil reserves, so... For almost two decades, under Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro, and spoiler alert, we'll be talking about him later on, (laughs) they've been providing funds to the Venezuelan government to be paid back in shipments of oil. Venezuela also received cheap Chinese goods such as mobile phones, motorcycles, and home building materials, which really helped the Venezuelan government win support from the poor. Under Chavez, trade with China went from $500 million dollars to $7.5 billion in 10 years. Oh, of course. You know, all that money has to go somewhere. Yep, that's where they're beginning it from. And now Venezuelans are paying the piper in the form of inflation and serious shortages in everything from food and medicine to building supplies. China is apparently hoping that this is a short-term hump, that they can ride into long-term profitability when the oil finally manages to start flowing again. China is Venezuela's second largest oil consumer and has loaned them $60 billion, $20 billion of which remains unpaid, and it doesn't really look as if China is ever going to see that money ever again. Well, if China is putting all this money into Venezuela, this will help Venezuela. China's like, hold on. you got to make sure it benefits us as well. you got to look at the person who's funding you. And also, there were some 600 projects Maduro and Chavez signed agreements with China to develop, including housing projects, infrastructure projects, and manufacturing plants, which they used to win the support of Venezuelans with poor long-term memory. And most of those projects are incomplete. Many of them were never even started. The status quo continues, and unlike the people under his boot, Maduro himself isn't exactly suffering. We'll have more on that later, but... Of course. The leaders never starve. The leaders never starve. But the bottom line is, China is propping up a failed socialist state, enriching the politicians at the expense of the people, and they may end up paying a big price for it. It's never the politicians. It is always the people 
who always had to take the blunt of these roles every time, every single time. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now. And now it's time to blow CO2 in the face of this week's biggest bogan emitter. It's been a while since we've done one of these, but we have an article from David Robert Grimes in The Guardian entitled, Libertarian Ideology is the Natural Enemy of Science. Wow. Yeah. That's, you know, I'm not a libertarian, and that's pretty much BS right there. Well, to describe to any non-libertarians out there how big of a fail that title is, it's the equivalent of saying... Atheist religion is the natural enemy of classical music. A contradiction on top of a non sequitur. Yeah, pretty much. And, heck, I'm a Christian, so that even makes less sense for me. (laughs) So, hold on to your hats, folks. Bumpy ride and all that. The first statement is good, but it's a reason why we are libertarians. Quote, In science... All hypotheses must withstand the trial by fire of experiment. Its methodology is self-correcting and objective, unconcerned with petty prejudices or personal conviction. Politics, by contrast, is deeply entangled with ideology. It is not bound to respect reality as science is and thinks nothing of substituting convincing evidence for emotive rhetoric. And yet, when science and politics clash, it is all too often science that loses. Well, they pull the emotion argument. Say, oh, you want kids to die. Yeah. Oh, you want kids not to be educated. Oh, you just want, you know, a uh, foreign power to come in to dictate. Well, we just don't want things to be done by force. And it seems to me that it's with the prejudice and the personal conviction that makes you want to use force. And, I mean, we see kind of the contradiction in things where if you're not convinced that you're right, you shouldn't want to use force. If you are convinced that you're right, you shouldn't need to use force. Exactly. And that's something I actually really respect, the whole non-aggression principle. If this is such a good idea, put down the gun and argue your idea. Make your case. But he doesn't do that, and the fail proceeds fairly quickly. Quote, This is clearly seen in clashes between scientific evidence and economic liberalism, which is defined by the belief that economies should be founded along individualist lines with minimal government regulation. Strong support for the free market and private property rights are identifying features. This latter axiom of faith states that those who have obtained property are free to exploit it as they desire, with no obligation to others. This right is considered absolute, and anything that would interfere with the property without consent, often even taxation, is considered an infringement. And in order to see what's wrong with that, just substitute free market and private property rights with leaving people alone. Yeah. Any intrusion on this is a use of force, and force must be justified prior to its use, but people like Grimes can't do that, so they have to phrase it all in this way, littered with the weasel words like faith and exploit. There it is. Why can't these things be more voluntary? Why can't people say, okay, I want to support this or not support this? Why do people, the public, have to take the brunt for all these wars, these boondoggles, to the war on drugs, the war on all these other type of things? Quote, 
Climate change illustrates this well, because despite overwhelming evidence of anthropogenic influence, there is a tendency for those with pronounced free market views to reject the reality of global warming. The reason underpinning this is transparent. If one accepts human-mediated climate change, then supporting mitigating action should follow. But the demon of regulation is a bridge too far for many libertarians. Okay, his confusion here is between something that is descriptive and something that is prescriptive. The science of climate change is descriptive. It tells you what's happening. But people like Grimes want to make that into something prescriptive. You must pass their regulations, which coincidentally constitutes the same socialist environmentalist extremism they've always been calling for, which probably won't do a single thing to help. It's the feel goods. That's what it is. It will be a feel good motion while things like, um, you know, um, when things will continue to go to crap. A lot of people are pro environment, but a lot of people are like, well, how is this going to the cost? How is it going to be managed? Should the EPA be the ones responsible? Right. And there is something that could absolutely be our saving grace here, as we've pointed out many times safe, clean, cheap, efficient, and carbon-free nuclear power. And Grimes himself has, in the past, pointed this out. I'm linking to an article of his entitled, Green Movement Needs to Embrace Nuclear Energy. And while he doesn't get quite all of his facts right, it's mostly good. And it's a reasonable argument for why environmentalists should get behind nuclear energy. But that makes his comments here all the more puzzling because it's resulted in leftists giving him the same bogus criticism he just levied against libertarians. It says, quote, when faced with this ideological dilemma, free market advocates often resolve with the confident dissidents by simply rejecting the reality of climate change rather than acknowledging the axiom is fundamentally fraud. I'm like, hold up. Again, you're telling the people that, yeah, the people who want freedom, who do want to have the environment, who do want to have the things like, oh, they don't care. They do care. They just worry about looking at the governments who honestly are basically, you know, paid shields for the most part. Yeah. They don't care about the environment. They barely can handle school lunches for the most part. Yeah. More often than not, you hear what the stories with the EPA. Didn't they pollute a river? Yep. Uh, Far worse than anyone else has. Yeah. This is what happens in government. They take something that should be surgery and they just use a chainsaw and just cut everything off. Quote. The individualist anti-regulation stance of free market advocates also has serious consequences for health care. As economist Paul Krugman, do I really need to read any further? I will anyway, explains in a recent column, disciples of Milton Friedman, another good weasel word there, disciple, remain deeply opposed to the very concept of the U.S. Federal Drug Administration viewing it as needless intrusion by government. In Friedman's opinion, without the FDA, corporations would be kept from hurting people by fear of lawsuits and thus self-regulate. Wow. That is a gross oversimplification. The idea is that a private organization similar to UL would work so much better. Oh, yeah, they don't mention um, UL, do they? No. I guarantee you, if you talk about UL, that's like it's a government agency. <laughs> or they ignore it entirely, but he goes on to say, quote, The truth is that without external evaluation, it is difficult to work out the efficacy or side effects of any drug. But that's exactly what companies like UL do, external evaluation. You don't need Grimes' magic government for that. No. Didn't you point out that if the FDA actually uh, held these up, uh, these medications so long for like five, yeah. ten years, people die? Uh, it takes like ten years and upwards of a billion dollars to get a new drug through the market through all these FDA regulations. That's why they stay in those type of reports so long. And they come out with so much money. That is the best get rich scheme. And I mean, if you read the rest of this paragraph, I mean, he doesn't even understand the difference with the FDA. The pharmaceutical companies do the testing, and they just report the results to the FDA. With the UL, UL does the testing, and the companies just pay for it. So how is that not better, and how does not invalidate everything he said in that paragraph? Because he's blaming the free market for things like no new antibiotics being developed, but again, 10 years and a billion dollars, what do you expect? And he says, quote, 
This is the logical outcome of entrusting health research to private companies. What? Well, isn't it funny that once again, a state cultist picks one of the most heavily regulated markets to make his case, which is health care. Yeah. Again, no one talks about like the most least regulated market, computers and uh, all these other places we're using right now. We have so much innovation right here. I and mean, we're talking to each other with uh, microphones and you recording stuff with this free software with like audacity and talking on skype this is like well for the most part studio equipment well and you and i aren't exactly rolling in cash no. you know we're not rich guys and you know probably you know 20 years ago or whatever when you had to pay thousands of dollars for a microphone and you would have had to pay probably hundreds if not thousands of dollars a month for the uh link between north carolina and maryland and things like that, this could only be done by rich people, and now you have a couple of poor guys who are doing this with studio-quality microphones yep. and sending it out to the world. Yeah, people don't see the small little uh, miracle in that. I mean, yeah, it's funny how the less regulated stuff, are uh, people are going towards that. They want freedom. Quote, Another example is gun control. Many American libertarians decry any suggestion that regulations should be tightened, insisting people have the right to arm themselves to make themselves safer. But the statistics show this argument to be nonsensical. Those who carry firearms, even for protection, are much more likely to be shot and increase the risk of death for those around them. Wrong! 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 Check out my video, How to Argue for Gun Control, for the real statistics there. It never goes to the police departments either. Yeah. You notice that. And it never goes to the bodyguards that guard all of the celebrities and everyone that are calling for gun control. Or the military. Yeah. That, to me, the fullest argument of gun control. They say, well, gun deaths are always down. They always point to gun deaths. Never violent crime. Well, they have to do it because the only way they can get those numbers up is by including suicides. Yeah. Gun control is not going to help anyone. It doesn't help anybody. It's a feel-good law. It makes you feel good without doing good. Quote, The ruthlessly individualist philosophy fetishized by the modern disciples of Ayn Rand, oh, for crying out loud, conveniently ignores the fact that humans do not exist in a vacuum and that individual actions often have consequences for all. Oh, so how do you explain, for example, the excellent essay, I Pencil, which is based on exactly that? And how come he gets to ignore the unintended consequences of his holy state's policies? Yeah, I mean, how many times? This says me as a black American, I can list them numerous things. Like, for example, slavery, Jim Crow, the Tuskegee experiments, the continuous war on drugs that basically destroying how many lives, breaking up so many families, and the list goes on and on and on. Yet, that doesn't come into his whole actions has consequences. Quote, The mantra that profit is a panacea for everything, straw man, and that personal rights trump collective good is frequently misguided and potentially disastrous. Citation needed. Why? Can someone tell me why? You know, why do people still have this? And he says, quote, We must be wary of allowing any political ideology to blind us to objective reality. Yes, Grimes, I agree. You should absolutely start doing that. Come form. Come form. Come form. I don't think anything more needs to be said as to why David Robert Grimes has been named this week's biggest bogam emitter. Bogosity.tv gives you great ways to shop at Amazon. Clear your cookies and go to Amazon.Bogosity.tv and you won't pay a penny more for your purchase. Or go to Prime.Bogosity.tv for a 30-day free trial of Amazon Prime and enjoy thousands of movies and TV episodes, borrow Kindle books, and get unlimited two-day shipping for free. And speaking of Kindle, Go to kindle.bogosity.tv for a 30-day free trial to Kindle Unlimited. Read over 1 million books and listen to thousands of audiobooks on any device. 
or go to home.bogosity.tv to try Amazon Home Services. Over a thousand different services from quality hand-picked pros, from house cleaning to equipment and furniture assembly, plumbing, electrical, painting, and other handyman services, all backed by Amazon's happiness guarantee. And as always, check the right-hand side of the podcast page for special Amazon deals. And now let's detune this week's And it's it's extraordinary. extraordinary. Oh, Maduro, Maduro, you've been the biggest source of entertainment for this podcast since Bubbles Bernanke stopped being Fed Chair. It's just such a shame this comes at the expense of so much suffering in his country. And what's amazing is how out of touch Maduro seems to be about it. Well, he's a leader, so... Yeah, kind of goes with the territory, I think, so... He did this live television broadcast where he addressed the concerns of his people. Actually, he didn't do that at all. When a single mom told him she can't afford to feed her four kids, his response was to joke about her foreign-sounding last name of Smith. Wow. Sure, you're you're completely, um, you know, you can't feed your four children. Hey, you got a wacky name. (laughs) When a girl complained of her classmates being so hungry they were fainting, Maduro chided her for not doing more for them. Wow. A boy says he missed a big soccer game because he had to go into the hospital. Maduro said he could watch it on YouTube. Okay, he is basically (laughs) shitposting. According to opposition leader Enrique Capriles, quote, As much as they try and hide reality, it always gets out and hits them live on TV. The only one gaining weight in Venezuela is Maduro. He hardly fits on the TV screen anymore. But, um... The same cannot be said, sadly, of 48-year-old mother of two, Ludi Barrio, who lost 50 pounds last year because of a lack of food, a weight loss plan Venezuelans call the Maduro diet. She said, quote, They want to stay in power, so they say nothing is wrong. We're hungrier by the day. And we've covered the long lines for food and other basic goods. While Maduro and his governors have plenty to eat, and tell the people to just eat fried rocks. You remember that one? Ah, uh, let them eat cake. Cake is better than fried rocks. I mean, come on. Uh. By the way, when someone mentioned the Maduro diet to him at a public event, Maduro replied, The Maduro diet makes you hard without need for Viagra. Well, like I said, he's trying so hard to be funny, but in the end, it's not going to help. And it's funny that the reference to him talking about YouTube went down so bad because Venezuela's poor internet connectivity and the high-priced computers that the people and phones that the people, the majority of the populace, you know, the people who are getting screwed, they can't afford. Yeah, they can't afford the bandwidth to watch YouTube. And also, he was probably more worried about having to be hospitalized than about the soccer game. Yeah, maybe um, old Marty needs to start going on 4chan and trying to, you know, stop trying to be the top heck. And maybe not being, you know, protect his people or something like that. But it's that astounding ignorance of what's going on in his own country and the plight that his people face and his cavalier attitude towards these complaints that makes Nicolas Maduro this week's Idiot Extraordinary. Well, that wraps up this I always get mixed up between golf and fire edition of the Bogosity Podcast. Come join the discussion at forum.bogosity.tv and feel free to send a question, statement, news article, or rant in text or audio to podcast at bogosity.tv. This podcast depends on you to keep going, so please donate using the links on the website or the QR codes in the thumbnail or become a patron at patreon.bogosity.tv and get the podcast and YouTube videos early and without ads or promos. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Charles Thomas for joining me. No problem. Until next time, here's a quote from Frederick Bastiat. Socialism, like the ancient ideas from which it springs, confuses the distinction between government and society. As a result of this, every time we object to a thing being done by government, the socialists conclude that we object to its being done at all. It is as if the socialists were to accuse us of not wanting persons to eat because we do not want the state to raise grain. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution on Commercial Derivatives 4.0 International License.
Curiosity. Want answers to creationist claims against evolution? Would you like to know more about evolution yourself, or even engage creationists more directly, with actual peer-reviewed sources to back you up? My book, How Evolution is Scientific, is designed to show the basics of evolutionary theory and how it is so well supported using the scientific method. It's impeccably sourced, with references to the actual scientific material, and is arranged using the creationists' own criteria of what is scientific. Using their own arguments against them, see how evolution is scientific, but creationism is not. Based on observations, accurate predictions, logic, and evidence. Get answers to common creationist claims, and even a primer on abiogenesis, the start of all life. It's all in my book, How Evolution is Scientific, available at Amazon, and on Kindle, EPUB, and PDF as well. Get How Evolution is Scientific and never be taken in by creationists again. Testing, testing, testing. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Dip, 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 dip. Yep, 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 Those little aliens on Sesame Street, whatever they are. Oh, yes. Yep, 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 yep. I actually saw people actually wearing cosplays of that. Oh, that will be awesome. Oh, yeah, I do. I think I have pictures of that. I'll, I'll, I think I'll show you if I find them. Uh, anyway, right. uh, let's get this thing started.